Hey friends, happy hot news. It's the last day of March, which means we only have one more day until we enter a new month of debauchery and chaos. What's gonna be happening on the streets in April is what we need to know. January, we had all out nuclear war going between America and Iran. Then Australia was on fire. Then we got Voldemort rampaging in the streets. What's going next? What's happening in April? I don't know. But I also don't know the answer to this existential question of the day, which is, have you ever considered how wet your bones are? Have you? They're moist. They've got, they got sloshing blood around it. They got some moist muscle connecting to it. Your bones are very wet right now, my friends. It's not a very dry event happening with your bones. Answer down below <laughs> as to how often you've considered this. We want, we need to know. And I need to know who let a Intel in charge of things when things are going so wrong for them. So many things going bad for Intel these days. Their 9,000 series desktop CPUs ain't very good. Their laptops, we're gonna talk about that in a second, are kinda old school. Their 10 nanometers, nowhere to be found. Everything's just all in an uproar about them. And while everybody yesterday was talking about the laptops that AMD came out with, nobody was talking about this. If you take some of AMD's code and you port it over into the drivers for Intel, the the graphics on Intel run faster because of AMD compiled code. So Intel ports AMD compiler code for a 10% performance boost in Linux gaming. So this is only tested out in Linux gaming right now. However, Intel's open source 3D driver team can port AMD's compiler code that they worked with Valve to make and was specifically developed between AMD and Valve. And once you take what AMD's made and you port it into Intel graphics, you get 10% better performance. AMD making Intel better, Intel having some open source graphics drivers, but this is a win for everybody, to be quite honest. I, I open source drivers is a good thing. Open source code, it's a good thing. It makes sure that everybody's benefiting from it. So Intel not really having the best of days as of late and seeing a lot of benefit at the hands of AMD, both from competitive pressure, but also just regular performance when you use their open source code with their integrated GPUs. Oh my goodness. It's a little bit more complicated than that. You can check out the link in the video description to go over to Pharonix where they have a detailed breakdown of it, but basically it enabled an IO vector vectorization pass for NIR that is originally based on the ACO code for the Mesa Radeon Vulcan driver, and that once it put into Intel, it gave better performance in Deus Ex, Mankind Divided, Doom, Shadow of Mordor, Dirt, Showdown, Batman titles, and all of that. Hectic, hectic stuff. But what's also hectic is just how destroyed Intel got yesterday with the launch of the new AMD Ryzen 4000 laptops. I haven't seen a single review that doesn't just spell the death toll for Intel. It is bad. You can check out a link to an aggregated review list down below, but Linus Tech Tips Hardware Unboxed. Basically everybody who got their hands on Ryzen CPU laptops were just like, what is Intel doing? Not only is it faster or as fast, but it also does it at considerably less power, like half the power usage. It's crazy. AMD just reckon the field when it comes to laptops. Obviously the biggest thing with laptops is not necessarily how good your parts are, but how many OEMs are gonna pick you up. And really there's only a few models out there right now for the Ryzen laptops, but hopefully now that they've shown just how massively popular the Zen 2 CPUs are in the mobile form factor, we might be able to see more companies such as Dell, HP, Lenovo, pick them up and use them as their preeminent CPU in all of their laptops. That would be the best thing. But not to give AMD all of the glory, okay? And not to give AMD all of the news. There's some indication of the i9-10980HK, which is only going to be a slightly overclocked version of what's already out there. There's an MSI gaming laptop that's been listed for this. The MSI GS66 Stealth 10SG gaming laptop, which is supposed to arrive at the end of May, it was listed to have the highest core i9 it has an RTX 2080 Super and a 300 Hertz panel. So it's gonna be a big deal, which we have to see with AMD laptops. Are we gonna get things like a RTX 2080 Super Super? And are we gonna get high refresh rate, super high refresh rate? Just have to wait and see. But while people and gamers want high refresh rate, cloud servers want high people usage. And that's what they're getting now that everybody's staying home due to the Voldemort issue with Microsoft Azure saying that their traffic has surged 775% amid everything that's going on. Microsoft saying that they're completely capable of dealing with all of this, but there's things such as Microsoft Teams, which allows you to video interface with everybody, remote working, all that kind of stuff. And the demand for Windows virtual desktop has gone up three times as well. Microsoft just big booming, big booming. Amazon Web Services, I'm sure is also big boom. And there's a big boom coming up with new RAM mod 
module sometime soon. We talked about in an episode of Hot News last week that DDR5 is looking good. We've got some indication that Samsung has begun production on the node that they're going to convert into DDR5. But then there is a company called Cadence, who is a fabulous semiconductor company who's going to be working on IC designs and all of that, saying that they have DDR5 at 4,800 mega transfers per second, which would be equivalent to around 4,800 megahertz. And they're believing that their first system on chips should be arriving later this year. So DDR5 coming in hot and heavy sometime soon. Get us off this DDR4 train, which was brought to you by Intel, which I only know that because of the Linus Tech Tips ads, which was bringing DDR4 to the mainstream. Check out Intel Skylake 6700K down below in the link in the video description. I can't remember the ad, but DDR4 to the mainstream was the thing. What's becoming more mainstream is electric vehicles, but not the hypercar version. However, there's a new super sports EV concept coming from Apex AP0. Oh, that's loud. It's a beautiful, beautiful electric concept car. Obviously, I would love if I had this in my garage. I, it, it just looks gorgeous. I want it. But I also want the Tesla Roadster a little bit more just because Tesla is an established company. You have the supercharger network. There's a lot to love about Tesla that you can't get in another supercar. I'm not sure if you would call the BMW i8 a supercar. Probably not. You'd probably call it just a glorified Prius because it was just a plug-in hybrid. Anyways, they're done. They're done selling it. It's going to be it's going to be gonzo at the end of April. No more production of the BMW i8. They've sold around 20,000 units of this since it's been out since 2014. But it's time to move on. It's time to move on from the outdated oversized Prius. Sorry, you're canceled. And I don't know why I didn't put this next to the Microsoft article from before, and it's probably because I'm dumb. Microsoft is converting Office 365 to Microsoft 365. Everything's staying the same besides the name. They might be adding a few more like AI and cloud power tools, but for the most part, they're just renaming it to Microsoft 365 instead of Office. Do you know how good your data is? Well, it's helpful with the spread of Voldemort everywhere, and the University of California San Francisco campus has an initiative that will use your biometric feedback to start tracking everything with regards to Voldemort with push notifications, trying to track you, make sure that you're healthy, making sure that you're not coming in contact with other people who may have been infected. This is opt in right now. Obviously, this isn't something that's going to be super widespread in the United States. However, we've seen measures in countries like South Korea who have gone to tracking people's phones to make sure that they're not near anybody who is afflicted with Voldemort. It's kind of a similar idea, but on an opt in scale done by a university as opposed to a government wide, you have to give us access to your data, which might be coming. Who knows? We'll see what the next month holds. April is going to be wild, yo. It's going to be wild for you if you have more data to watch more things such as Tiger King on Netflix, which is just the craziest, craziest docu-series I've ever seen in my life. It's like Florida Man decided, you know what? People should make a film about me and then move to Oklahoma. Anyways, AT&T is going to help you out by giving 15 gigabytes of extra mobile hotspot data for every line on an unlimited plan between April 2nd and May 13th. So in case you have that plan, you can get more data to watch stuff. Anyways, I don't know why I went on a Tiger King rant and I don't know why I keep putting Microsoft articles not next to each other because this next one's about Microsoft's Edge browser and it's getting a new update, which is going to prevent some tracking stuff. It's going to make sure that you're not giving all of your data out there. That it's going to have a mode for you to select, which is going to lock down all of that stuff no third party cookies, all that kind of stuff. But then it also is going to have vertical tabs. And I hate this personally. I don't like it. I don't like the way it looks. Look at this. All my tabs on the left hand side in vertical order. No, no, no. Give me a bar at the top. I'm so used to the widescreen effect. Don't take up my width. Take up my height. Me no like it. But I will probably like the next OnePlus phone. We talked about about the OnePlus 8 Pro yesterday. It has a new interstellar glow design. OnePlus came out saying that they're going to have their announcement and all of that about the OnePlus 8 on April 14th. So you can stay tuned for that just two weeks until that happens. So we got to wait till April 14th, but you don't have to wait more than nine days right now to print your own case, your own computer case. Yes, there's a 3D printed DIY NAS case out there that you can pick up the 3D web or weeb, depending on how you want to read that word, MK735. It's an ultimate DIY NAS case where they give you all the instructions of how to 3D print your own chassis for your NAS. And the estimated total printer time is right around 220 hours, which is just over nine straight days of your printer going ham. People went ham wild when Voldemort hit, started canceling all their Airbnb reservations and Airbnb said everybody gets a free refund of all that kind of stuff. But apparently, they forgot to tell the hosts that they were going to do that and made the host go like, where's our money? What? No, we did, you can't. You're going to charge us for this. This is ridiculous. Anyways, Airbnb has announced that they're going to have a $250 million slush fund for their hosts in order to help with the Voldemort relief that's going on. This is going to cover reservations that were made before March 14th, but then were canceled between March 14th and May 31st. So it's a wide ranging thing as long as it was made before the 14th of March and they're going to start paying. They 
also said that they're sorry that they didn't communicate with the host. They had always intended on making sure everything was right for the guests and the host, but they just made sure that they got the public eye correct and then they screwed up on the back end, but they apologized. So good moves by Airbnb there. And good moves by D-Wave, the quantum computing company who's making its quantum computers available for any research organization that is working to fight against Voldemort and everything that's going on. Obviously, quantum computers able to do things that typical supercomputers cannot do, even folding at home might not be able to enter into the quantum realm, even though, I mean, folding at home is doing amazing 1.5 exaflops of performance power. And our team listed number 38 as of this morning in the latest 24 hour points average. Thank you all so much who joined Team UFD Tech for folding at home. Team 244613, if you wanna join our folding at home team, we're uh, doing great work. We're in the top 50 for computer networks that are contributing to fighting against Voldemort. You guys are amazing. Thank you. And what's amazing for some people, maybe not for others, is a new iPhone. I know you're locked down. You think, hey, I, this phone I have sucks. Ah, I have to use it so much more than I normally did. This thing's garbage. I need a new one. Well, an iPhone 9 case has apparently appeared at Best Buy inventory. Somebody taking a picture of a UAG case that is supposed to be supporting a new iPhone 4.7 inch 2020. So apparently they're not going to call it the iPhone 9. I mean, it's there. This could be fake because that's a weird statement to put on the case. New iPhone 4.7 inch instead of, I mean, they could just call it the new iPhone and that's what it is. It's the new iPhone. We've seen them doing this with the iPad. It's the new iPad. We're not going to give it a generation name. We're not going to get to give it a number. It's the new iPad. And this is the new wave of crazy entertainment that I hate, which is AI making things that shouldn't ever exist. In case you haven't seen the Great British Bake Off or as it's known here, the Great British Baking Show with Noel Fielding. He does an amazing job as a host of that show, by the way. If you haven't watched that on Netflix, watch Tiger King and watch the most recent three or four seasons of the Great British Baking Show because Noel Fielding's the best. Anyways, somebody inputted scenes from the Great British Bake Off, 55,000 images into an AI thing and then created this monstrosity of what it looks like. It's horrific. The AI is not ready to take over the world or if they are, they're gonna mangle our parts together and think that we're looking good. Which, I mean, if they're mangling our parts together, hopefully our bones don't dry out. Which leads us back to the existential question of the day. Have you ever thought about how wet your bones really are? Juicy morsels, <laughs> moist in your skin flaps. I'm done. Hit the like button, get subscribed. I, I'm gonna stick to tech news, not wet bones. Bye. If they were dry, it would actually be bad. It would be bad if your bones were dry, but they're very moist. Ain't, ain't no wildfires happening in your bones. I don't like it. Because they're too moist. <laughs>